Okay, today we're going to talk about a little cleaning modification I've done to my, uh, or will do to this Attack 45 wood gasification boiler. So what we're looking at here is the, uh, the heat exchangers, tubes uh, inside the boiler, and you can see that there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tubes, and there's turbulators in there. And the factory setup for cleaning these uh, is is pretty quick and easy. There's simply a lever on the side of the boiler that you move up and down, and what it does is it moves these turbulators up and down, and it works okay. But the problem is, is the turbulators are not a real close fit to the heat exchanger tubes, and you're not really you really have to have some gross buildup to. Uh, to clean those. Um, there's still quite a bit of fly ash in there that limits your uh, heat transfer. So what I've done to my other boiler is I've removed everything from the lever out here, the shaft, um, this, this whole assembly right here, and these two lift arms. There's one, there's the other. And I remove all that, and then I just uh, the turbulators themselves will stay in there. We you need those for heat transfer. Uh, it slows the flow the flow down through the tubes, uh, but it doesn't mean uh, those can't be removed a lot easier for cleaning. And but with all this mechanism out of the way, they simply slide right up and out the top cover. Which by the top cover, by the way is uh looks looks like this right here there's simply two wing nuts and there's also a sheet metal cover that just simply pulls off it's got these little quick release clips so it's pretty once once this modification is done you can clean do a deep clean of this boiler or at least of these exchanger tubes in about five minutes Otherwise, you have to would have to remove this mechanism every time and replace it, which is pretty time consuming. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that, and when we come back, we'll have it all removed, and I'll show you how I brush brush the tubes. Okay, so we're back. We've completely removed the uh, the mechanism that moves turbulators up and down, and you can see. I think you can see that. Even though I actuated those turbulators before I removed them, there's still quite a bit of fly ash in the uh, in the exchanger tubes, and that uh, that prevents good heat transfer. So I think it's a lot better just to remove the turbulators, forget about the mechanism that won't ever go back in, and use a uh, brush to brush these up and down. It's a lot quicker and it does a lot better job of cleaning. So we look over here and have. So here's the mechanism that will not go back in. There's just no need for it, and the, even the lever. Uh, you can see the turbulators, they, they'll come, they simply pull out a lot easier now. They just pull straight up and out. And I shake them on the ground a few times to knock the fly off, ash, fly ash off of those, and then put them back in after I'm done brushing the tubes. And it also makes uh, a lot easier to vacuum out this ch entire chamber um, with without all that mechanism in there. I will have to reinstall. There's, there's side plates that supported uh, that rod. You can see where it bolts on over here. And I'll have to plug this hole. I'll just use some foil tape sandwich in between the side of the boiler and, and this plate and bolt bolt them back in otherwise we have a we'll have a flue gas leak through this hole and also a little easier access this is the bypass mechanism and the first year i burned the boiler this thing always seemed to stick closed um just from you get some creosote buildup in the in the primary burn chamber because it's not gasifying there. It gasifies in the lower chamber, the secondary chamber, the lower chamber. Um, but what I found with my first boiler is after the first year, 
it doesn't stick anymore. Uh, but if it does stick, one of the things you can do is uh, open this bypass up. I have the loading door closed, so it's the bypass is closed. Uh, and, and scrape it once in a while, maybe put some anti high temperature anti-seize on there. That does help for a little while. But eventually the problem seems to just fix itself. Uh, so next I'm going to brush, brush the tubes. So here's my brush setup. Uh, got a, a two and a half inch, uh, basically tube brush, an extension. And you can just run this up and down by hand, but if you've got the ceiling height, and I've barely got the ceiling height here, uh, put a drill on it and get some rotation as you go up and down through the tubes. And uh, so I don't have enough hands here to show that while I'm holding the camera, but just run up and down the tubes a few times. Um, now I have to admit this is the first time I've cleaned this boiler, uh, did the tube cleaning this, this season. Uh, once I get her good and clean, I'll, I'll come back and do this uh, once a week. Of course, depending on how much I fire the boiler. Uh, my other boiler gets fired once a day, so I, I do clean that, do this cleaning once a week. Uh, maybe more than I need, but uh, I, like, I like to keep the transfer e efficiency up there. And the other thing to do while you've uh, you've got these turbulators out, and once I have these tubes clean, is it's, it's time that's the best time to clean the bottom chamber. And that's just two wing nuts, and basically it's just a matter of vacuuming that out. Um, you can I do run the uh, shove the brush back and forth just to get the this. The ceiling base in there where the tubes uh, empty out, the exchanger tubes, uh, it gets to be a little buildup up on that uh, upper surface, I guess. And then uh, it's just a matter of putting the turbulators back in and putting covers back on, and we're good to go. Okay, so we're, we're completely clean. We've got our turbulators back in place. We're ready to close it up. Um, these are a heck of a lot easier to get in, in and out now, and the brush through the tubes does a much more thorough job. Again, once in a week is more than enough. Um, maybe you could get by every two weeks. Uh, depends how you're burning and how much you're burning. Uh, one more tip before we're done. We're upper uh, primary chamber here. You can see, um, I've got some standard stove fire bricks sitting over the nozzle, uh, simulating the the slot in the in the factory cast nozzle, and you can see that there's some wear, and these will be need to be replaced in uh, you know perhaps a month or so or a few weeks. Um, but the reason for doing this is uh, you don't want that wear on your factory nozzle. Um, these, you know, fire bricks are a couple of bucks a piece from Menards or Home Depot or any stove shop. Um, far better to sacrifice these uh, than to, you know, have to replace a factory nozzle. Uh, so, just that's it. That's my last tip for for this video.